Hey, 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 hey. So listen, guys. Remember what we were just talking about? Hold on, Terry. Remember what we were just talking about? We we're, were reading that part of the book of how it works, where it says that he was the actor, and if he can only wrestle satisfaction in life, if anybody has the book open, we can get to that part. Do we re do, do any of you remember the part I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Good. I don't even care if you're lying. I really do remember. So I'm not hearing. One name, Bella. Okay. So here's, and I want to get to that part again. I just want to read that. Take grab the book. Too. I guess. Okay. Okay. So go to that part where they talk about if you can only wrestle satisfaction, like um, any life run on self-will could hardly be a success. Remember what we were talking about that. Look for that part. Part it's like each person is like an actor who wants to run yeah. a stroke, if forever trying to arrange the lights to ballet, the scenery, the rest of the players in his own way. Okay. So what word comes into mind when you hear that? Oh, yeah. Control. Is it? Manipulation. What? Manipulation. Manipulation, control, like, but this, getting back to what I want to say. I think in our minds, we kind of know what the key to life is. And what I mean by the key to life is we know what's going to make us happy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. And real quick, Rick, what would you say the key to life for you? Like the key to life or what do you think, like, do you understand what I'm saying? Give me a little, what would you think the key to life is? Or, or the form? The, the key to life? Yeah, what's the key to life? I would say happiness. Happiness, but how do you get that? Great. How, um, how, how, how could you manufacture happiness? For everything to be, well, in a monetary sense, I, I would think everything to be paid for and caught up and where you can relax and enjoy life. Thank you. Because listen, if you would have asked me the same question when I was in treatment, I would have been like four mil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, for real, four mil. Because that sounds like just enough where I can take maybe three, like I can take care of everything that I want to do, and then I can do whatever the fuck I wanted to do until I probably overdosed and died. You know what I mean? Like, but no, my key, my key to life when I was sitting in New York, chip was that if I can just do what I want, when I want, if I can take care of all my responsibilities, because I don't want to do just what I want, when I want, and then like not pay the bills I'm supposed to pay, or not do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So my key to life, like I said, like this, I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it. I want to get, basically, I want to get what I want. If I want it, I get it. Do you understand? Uh -huh. What do you think? I feel like, it's a combination of two things. I did, okay. I did a case study on consciousness a couple months ago. Okay. And I was able to figure out, you know, the brain works through electricity. That's just the way the neurons fire. It works through what? The brain works through electricity. Okay, yes. That's how neurons fire. So that being said, you know, God gave us so many chemicals in our brain. So those chemicals interact with each other and create emotions. Yeah. We have the ability to control those emotions. Now, sometimes we need medications to level them out. Sometimes we don't. Well, that being said, you have the determination and willpower to manifest your own destiny through happiness. Okay, maybe with the right knowledge and maybe right this, but let's let's all. I'm going to ask these all a question in here. Do we have an ability to control our emotions? I don't. That, uh, that no, like that's my point. Like I didn't. I mean, let me tell you. Sometimes I was led by my emotions. If I was angry, I wanted to just stomp you out. If I, well, let's put it this way. I wasn't really very good at coping with my emotions. You know how I cope with my emotions? Yes, I use. Control your tears? Yeah, I use, but I use. Because here's the thing I say all the time. What did we just say before? The actor, the guy that's, he could be very virtuous. He could be very virtuous. The guy that wants to arrange the play, the lighting, the stage, and all that. That breaks down into control. Because when I say what's the key to life, here's the same thing that we can, even if you can't make the connections right now, we all want shit to go our way. Because if it goes our way, then we'll be happy. And we want to control it to go our way because here's why we want to control it so bad, so that, it, so much, so that it don't go bad. We're scared to death of things not going our way because we're convinced if it goes our way, we'll be happy. But how much, I mean, how much do you really think you can control if we can't even control our emotions for the most part? Yes. 
I think we can control our emotions. Unless you have a diagnosis of something else, I think people can control their emotions. Because if you get angry, what are you getting angry about? Like, why are you getting angry? I, I, I mean, there's a... I mean, at least I can't, like, if I'm getting angry over something stupid and I realize it, like, five minutes later, it's like, okay, whoa, why are you getting angry? I can control that. Like, okay. immediately, I should know better than to get angry at you because you're wearing blue. Yeah. Like, you know, well, like... Well, I get that. And I'm not saying we're, like, ridiculously irrational with things. <clears throat> but are we not the type of people that say, oh, okay, let's say we can't... Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Do we not tend to overreact things... Do we not tend to have, say, the proper response a healthy, well-adjusted person would have? Well, yeah. Like, if I'm, like, completely blackout drunk, I'm, like, a complete different person. And now that I've been a month into my, you know, soberness, yeah. I guess, I, you know, into whatever, I can figure out, okay, this is why I'm getting angry. I need to put a pause on this, take a step back, go walk yeah. away. But if I'm blackout drunk or I'm drunk, then, yeah, I'm <clears> overreacting. <throat> I'm being stupid. Well, so here's the thing. We're not going to talk about when we're drinking or when we're drunk because we're so not... So therefore, I can't control it by not drinking. That's called okay. future tripping, right? Yeah, but here's, here's what I want to ask you. So maybe anger is not your thing like it's mine and Right, right. Maybe yours is love. Yeah. Do yeah. sometimes you maybe fall in love too quick? I don't fall in love maybe like or less, but yeah. Okay, but you know, like, and I'm only bringing this up because you brought it up. Mm -hmm. Moving in with somebody too quickly. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, where and some of us, like me and Rick would probably be like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> but then you see the way we react out of anger, and, you know, and, and like you would be like, "Well, I would never do that." And so that's what I'm trying to say is like we we don't have. It says right in the doctor's opinion that we are maladjusted to life. What would maladjusted mean? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? We're bad. We well, it, it's not well adjusted, right? Mal means bad. We were good. badly adjusted, like we didn't have <coughs> coping skills. Well, coping skills, yeah. Coping yeah. skills are different than. I, I was just thinking. Does, doesn't you maybe control your emotions would come a lot with humility? Well, yes, it does. Well, here's, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, right? But in early sobriety, um, and, and like say you're clean, you're sober, you work the steps, you have the spiritual awakening, the psychic change, all of a sudden, like the drink problem is solved for now. What do you think mm -hmm. is next? Next, they talk about this in the 12 and 12. Mm -hmm. Emotional sobriety. Learning to live with your emotions. Right? Yes, emotional sobriety. Learning to live with your emotions. Because what now, why do we have to learn to live with our emotions in early recovery? Because what don't we have anymore to control the emotions? We don't have our substance. Exactly. Yeah. We don't have our main, that's our main, skill. that's our main, I mean, yeah. which it's not a coping skill at all. It's really not, but that's what, yeah. And I'm sorry, Sean. I, didn't I was going to say, I don't know that we can control our emotions, like if something makes you mad, it makes you mad, if something makes you sad, but we can learn to control our response. Well, here's what I want to say. Has anybody yeah. in here ever, ever been in, in trouble with the law because of their anger? <coughs> yes. Wow. Okay, okay. Now, has anybody in here ever contemplated suicide through a breakup? No? Absolutely. All right, how about just contemplating suicide? Okay, so do you see how that, like, do you get where I'm, you go, I'm going this, like, we, our ability to, and it, it says it in the, in the story in the back, the freedom from the bottom, the, the lady says, she goes, I never really acted normally in any type of situation. Like, it was, I mean, let's be real. Think about how stuff affects us compared to other people. Why do you think we... Why do you think, if we weren't so ultra sensitive, if we weren't the type of people to fly off the handle for no reason or fall in love with somebody, why do you think the drugs and alcohol feel so good to us? And, and, and a lot of times when I say, what's the key to life, what would make you happy? A lot of us think if we get what we want, we're happy. What does that sound like? Spoiled. Childish, right? Childish. A, a, kid, a kid wants to do, you know what I mean? Like they don't want to listen to anything, they want to do this. Now here's what I want to tell you. What if I told you, and, and hopefully you can see where I'm going, what if I told you that is not the key to happiness? That is not the key to life. What is the key to happiness? I'm trying to figure that out. Well, if you're asking me, it's it's God. People. God. People. People. God. Being Love of people. service. Like, putting, like, having, having, so, 
A spiritual awakening, I've already told you this, is a complete perspective change, a psychic change. If we've had many spiritual awakenings or revelations our whole life, like I tell you all the time, like how many of us had a breakup and at first we thought we'd never gonna feel the same and then a few weeks or months later, we were like, oh, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Is your spirit not awakening to a different thing? Now, what I'm talking about is spiritual experiences. And a spiritual experience, it's like a nod from God. It's like this overwhelming feeling, it's like this overwhelming feeling that you're doing what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to be doing it, really connected with other people and this world and this earth and the universe and all this other stuff. And that's the key to life. To get what me and Terry were talking about before, you need to, because if you're trying to, like it said in the book before, trying to wrestle the satisfaction of life, like we're convinced that if we get what we want, we're gonna be happy. If we get our way, we'll be happy. What if I told you like that is not, it's being aligned with this and being aligned with other people and, and kind of, instead of trying to control everything, kind of just let it happen and go about life and do as much as you can and be as much as you can for people. And like, it's not about, and I like what you said there, because believe me, I was right there. It's not about materialism. Did you want to say something, Jimmy? No. Okay, it's not I'm about worried. materialism. It's not about getting things. Who in here, guys, who in here thought that the right type of car, apartment, house, or job was going to make you happy for the rest of your life? And it happened to me and it made me happy. It really did? Yeah. So what are you here for? My addiction. Well, so if you were happy, why were you chasing drugs and alcohol? To level out. To level out? That's like my director told me, you've got to figure out how fast you want to do Well, because, but do you see where I'm going with this? Because if we were truly happy, would we need the substance? Would we need this? Like, anybody in here know what it's like to get what you would Like, for me, it was always the, the, man, I want this. And it was the chase to get that. And then once I got it, it was never as good as I thought it was going to be. Uh -huh. Anybody know what that's like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I was convinced that it was like, all right, man, I just need to get to this level. And once I get to this level, I mean, at 16 years old, I thought $10,000 ruled the world. Like, I thought if I had $10,000, I'll be happy for the rest and of my life. And then you got 10K, and then what happened? I wanted 20. And then after 20? I mean, I, I mean, that's all I did. It was like my nose was wide open, and I was just chasing that. I mean, I'm, from where I come from, or whatever, in my world, in my mind, whatever it was, it was like money, power, and respect, right? Like, when I found out life was about love and service work, and is that, you know, because like, it was never like that. In my, my, I didn't want love. Like, I wanted respect. I didn't get respect or admiration or fear. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how people respected you. I didn't want people to, like, I didn't want to, and I didn't know that the more love you give, the more love you receive. See, that's the spiritual life kind of back in the boat. The more you get, the more you wind up getting. That goes against, like, you have to keep what you have by giving it away. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? If I want to keep what I have, I sure ain't giving it to you or you. You know what I mean? You know how I got to keep what I have? Keep getting more. That was my mindset. That was the way I went about everything. It wasn't like, oh, you know, like, I think in society, I think when we grow up, we're taught, like, go out and make it happen. You know what I mean? I mean, Tiffany, did you, were you not told, and I don't think anybody specifically told you this, but were you not told, oh, get married, have a job, get, do this, and you'll be happy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go to college, get a job, raise a family. Yeah, you'll be happy. Do that, do that. Yeah, keep up with the Jones, right? Like, we're told this, we're told that. Like, what if I told you, like, and I know this for a fact for me, but I noticed that never made me. <laughs> that's what society tells you to do. Yeah, Especially for women. Like, you gotta do this, 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 this. Yeah. My mom never taught me that, but yeah. But that's why I said, like, even yeah. if nobody verbally told you, yeah. isn't that what we're kind of told? Like, the American dream. Yeah. The exact yeah. manifest destiny. Yeah. Now well, it's making sense. Well, the American dream. And, and, and it's like, that's why, listen, it's funny that you say that, Andrew. I'm glad you said that, because the American dream, how it's so ingrained in us. And it's almost no surprise to me that America has the biggest drug and alcohol problem in the world. <laughs> well, do you understand what I'm saying? Because we're to are we not? Do we not live in a society of instant gratification? Do we not have role models and idols that basically get paid to do these YouTube influencers and these this? And, I mean, we. I mean, it's insane. Like, anybody in here ever been to other countries and see people with nothing? or very little and are much more happy than us. Yeah. How could that be then? So if the key to happiness is having all your, you know, having all your needs and wants and the this and that, how come they're so much more happy than we are? Yes. Can I tell you honestly? So I found, no, I'd rather I found the shoes, you okay. know, and after 10 minutes, I wanted, 
I wanted someone else's shoes that were worth, that weren't as special to society because it's all about design and, fundament, and fundamentalism. You know what I mean? Like principle based. Well, what if I told you that we had this thing, this missing piece, this spiritual malady, this thing that usually only God can fill in love and shit like that? What if I told you this thing was missing and we didn't know what it was and we're just looking out into this world going, oh, that's shiny? Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I want that. I see that. I want that. See, instead of seeing your way through life, how do you think we should go? I think we should close our eyes. No, we should. <laughs> yes. But we should feel. We should feel. This is what I'm saying. We should, feel, we should feel our way through life. What do I mean by that? I think the best thing to feel good about is helping other people and seeing other people smile, giving to them, watching. And you see it. You get. You get. I mean, I do. I get satisfaction from it. I get fulfilled from it. What if I That's, told you that we're built to do that? Like I say all the time, like I say all the time, guys. You give a kid a present, yeah. and he's tickled to death. Yeah. What, you don't like that? No, I, I know. That. That's, that's great. That's the greatest gift you get right there, so you kid happy. And you gave them happiness. You gave them yeah. joy. You helped, like, when I tell you, like, we were all put on earth to teach each other, to reach each right. other, to love and to nurture each other. Doesn't it feel good to, like, be somebody's crutch and lift them up? I say all the time, I get kidney stones sometimes. If I fell to my knees right now and couldn't move, none of you would hesitate. Maybe you would. But none of you would hesitate to help me. <laughs> no, but do you understand what I'm saying? Why would you not hesitate to help me? So right, I mean, well, I would like you. Like you. Not yeah. Yeah. No, I know, because but it's just, it's, but no, not that. And it could be anyway, because we're built to do that. We're built to do that. It's only, it's only our misformed. It's only on this, like, we were given bad information, we formulated these ideas, society, family, house, world. It's like we formed these ideas of what was going to make us happy that is keeping us from really being happy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like that's why I said this, this, I wanted to have, like, a really seriously deep spiritual conversation. I'm trying to get you guys to come along with me. So, Mike, is it, I mean, that's yes. a big answer, but is it the answer? You want to get deep? I mean, well, sure. If someone, works, if someone works for you, of course, for millions, but I think I could be happy as it can be to be a narcissistic self, uh, narcissist billionaire and not give a shit about anything else. Right? I, I mean, listen. That's also an answer. But I, I mean, I you're, saying, you're saying your answer is the answer, not a answer. I think there's maybe more than a couple answers out there. I, I don't know. Because are you a narcissistic rich billionaire? I'm just saying that. No, because, because you're But the United States has. 3,000 millionaires, not all of them are real spiritual, wonderful people, right? I don't and think most of them are. I mean, look, look right. let's just look at Kanye West. Uh, okay, yeah. I know Kanye uh, West, I can give you a CEO of a company never heard of before it's a billionaire and is just as happy as can be, but he's not, you well, know, all these things. Well, here's the thing, how do you know? Like Warren Buffett drives a car from 1996. How do you know he's happy? I know. Yeah, exactly. So we're not going to speculate about that. I'm going to, I'm giving you my, my experience. Right. When I lived one way, I felt like, I told you guys this the other day, I felt like that fish that swims upstream. You know what I mean? No, you said you wanted to be tough. I'm not going to be No, no, and that's fine. I didn't, you, you, just, yeah. you said it's that the answer. You didn't say it's a answer. You said it's the answer. That, that you wanted to be selfless, giving, uh, altruistic, you know why, is the answer. Do you know why I believe it's the answer? Because I feel it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I never, I never, like. I really think there's a lot of assholes out there who are very happy with I, I feel like a lot of people don't care enough to care. They've been told this will make you happy, and they don't look into it enough. Not the way we do. Do you understand? Most people are told this is what it is, and they're happy with this is what it is, and they're going through life. And if, if that was the case for us, none of us would be here. We're in here because we're in here because there was something inside of us that we couldn't get right, and we were getting it right with the outside chemicals. So you, re you reject the notion that sometimes just get high for fun. Well, you it, may, high, high it, it may start like that. It may start like that. But see, this is one thing I know for a fact. Nobody that's severely drug addicted or alcohol, uh, alcoholic, it's fun anymore. I know this. I know the pain and the torture. And that shit, I know, I know what that's like on the psyche. I know what that's like on the body. So the narrative is saying, 
your answer is the answer for those who have substance abuse problems. For those who don't, there could be other answers. Well, here's the thing. I think that they're okay with their current situation, but I think that every single human being was put on this to, in order to fulfill in order to fulfill this, they need to align themselves with this. Guys, please, man. No, sorry, I meant I mean, probably. You, no, you want that? You want that? I know. I'm, 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 I'm just that. trying to say. Like, I'm <laughs> just trying to say. Is it possible? Is it possible that we were wrong about some things? Yes. Yeah. I think that uh, from the experience, you know, we we know that people like Jimmy Hendrix, Chief Moon, um, I mean, you, uh, John Belushi, guys on top of the world, money. Women, fame, fortune, they weren't happy. The drugs took them out. Yeah. I mean, experience has shown us that. But we know that the money is and the fame and all that, that's not the answer. You know, it's not even a part of the answer. That like you said the answer has to come from within. We all we all miss that. You know, we're created for a connection and that connection is with each other and you know it's a horizontal and the vertical connection that we yeah. all desire. Even though we may not want to recognize it, accept it, it, it it's the real deal. And, and that I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you aligned with that because, I, like I said last week, I wouldn't sit here and preach that and say that if I didn't know that you, you could be connection. you could be happier and a different type of happy than you've ever been. Because no matter how happy I was in my old life, I was never as comfortable and satisfied and. You know, I never, 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 never. And like I said, why do I know this to be true? Because I feel it. I see it with other people. I know what it's like to sit in your seat. A hundred percent. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I've been in the presence of God. I believe I have. Now, that's the truth. Whether you believe it or not, I believe it. And that's all that needs to matter is you believe it. And I know I felt love. And I've never felt my on this earth. God told me I couldn't kill myself. And when I woke up in a, in a diaper, strapped to a bed, that's the first thing I want to do is die and be back with God. And that's God's honest truth. Now I know that for myself for a fact. And all he wants us to do is believe in him and have a little bit of faith. That's it. We're just supposed to love each other and help each other. Just like he said, it's a simple plan. And this is a way that I can't I can't put it any simpler because like I said, I know for me, I, I can tell you my story, but it's I'm trying to get it all where I can tell it to you. I told it one time a long time ago, 20 years ago in the church. And it's, you know, I just, I know I've been in the presence of God. Whether you know it or not, and I've told y'all. So well, you can believe I, me or not believe me, but I've said, just ask God. Just say, hey, I want to know you. Just keep doing it every day, and you'll know God. He'll, he'll make sure of it. Well, so here, here's what I, I believe that. Here's what, all I, my heart. here's what I want to say. That's why it says, see. Well, it, what would life be without money or cars or jewelry or anything like that? Well, that'd be wonderful. Well, yeah. I mean, let's put this way: we, we get by. No, but what would life be without love and hope? Don't we all have a faith mean, or something yeah. that we can help each other? That we don't have to have a million dollars that we can say, "Oh yeah, I'll build your house." Oh, would you fix my teeth? Oh, let me check your pulse. Yeah. You know, we all have that, but we don't do it because, well, it's greed. It's uh, we want to be God. See? Well, that, and I, I think, be. here's the thing, we live in fear. We live in fear. Do you know what the number one fear is? Fear of myself. Well, there's only two fears. Yes. There's, there's only, <laughs> well, the taxes. hold on. Sure. There's only two fears. Not getting what you want and losing what you already have. Everything will break down to those two fears. If you die, you're not getting what you want, right? Because you're not going to lose. Or you're losing, losing what you true. have in your life. Well, so, it is we, thing. so could you show. could you imagine could you imagine where we can cut out so much of this fear? Because if we know that we were put on this earth to do certain things, and that no matter what, that when it's all said and done, like we're going to go somewhere else and we're going to do this and do that, that like eternal life means everything. When wherever you're here now, how long are we going to be here, Rick? Hundred years if we're lucky. If we're lucky. If we're lucky. What's that compared to eternity? Again, if the man no. in the world could lose not his soul. It's, yeah, it's not. It's like, this is not, this is not it. I there is not. something, there is something. Does I anybody in here not believe that? And it's okay. It's okay to, like, question it. It's okay to whatever. But, so, Andrew, what is your key to life? What do you think would make everything okay? 
after last, well, last week or regular week or whatever it was, and humility. Being, a, being able to step outside of yourself to, to look at any problem would solve, solve a large portion of conflict. You know so I mean? you, you would like to mend the past relationships and stuff. You want to get to the point where, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's what you're saying. Wife or baby mother or kid or this and that. Like even, even outside of that, I want to get to the point where whatever, whether it's you know agree to disagree or just be a, be able to look outside of myself at whatever the situation is. Because most most of my life I've lived extremely selfish to the point of no, you know, offense. and I think learning how learning how to be sympathetic and empathetic towards it towards an individual with with no with no other what's the word? Conditions maybe? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I think that would if, if everybody lived like that, I think there would be more love just I mean how wouldn't there be? Yeah. I understand what you're saying. You know what I mean it's like people don't do it because they like all the fight movies you see on there. Well, Jimmy, I whooped your head. There ain't no money in it. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, I would help take change the tire beside the road and it's pouring down rain, but there ain't no money in it. There's no compassion. It's almost like, what's in it for me? Yeah, the ulterior yeah. motive. Yeah. If, if we lived without the ulterior motive, I think everybody would be happy. It's hard for me to be wrong, but you know what? It's okay to be wrong. Well, it's okay to be wrong, but like I was saying before, if, if, if this world, if there was no love in this world, what would this world be like? What it's turning into. That's well, yeah. But still, but, all right, I get yeah. oh, Great point. But here's the thing. Is there not love in this room right now? Big shit. Yeah. Love, yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. Why is that not the thing that we worship? Why is that not the thing we put above all else? I mean, we usually put money or what things, almost like our pride, we put this above things instead of, because in order to, like, if you want those relationships mended, you want this, you have to, you have to be humble in order to let it, right? <clears throat> put your pride aside, your ego's going aside, we, you know what I mean? Like, you change, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, like, what goes into all that shit is self-esteem, too. Yeah. We are very fucking self-esteem driven people. Well, do we yeah. not? Well, here's the real deal. How many of us put our self-esteem in either what it looked like or what other people think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, like, my whole, my whole addiction was surrounded by caring too much about what other people think. People like think trying to be, yeah, yeah, trying to please people, trying to... Well, that, I say that all the time. Like, let's be real. Like, if you break down the word self-esteem, and this is coming from a guy, my self-esteem is what other people thought of me. Do you understand? Because yeah. from a very young age, I always felt inferior. I always felt uncomfortable. Uh, you know, everybody, in my opinion, in my mind, not my opinion, everybody had nicer clothes than me, had a better family than me, had this and that. Like, I was judging my insides by everybody else's outside. So even if, like, it wasn't even the case with you, but it was with Jimmy and Andrew, it didn't even matter. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if I couldn't be completely above it, I was completely underneath it. Yeah. I'm completely the, the, black, the black and white, there, is no, there was no middle. Yeah, there was no middle. And it's like, when I realized none of that matters, when I realized the absolute most important thing in this world is mm -hmm. love. And the more I give, the more I receive. And the more, like, it's the only <coughs> thing that can really help and heal people. It's the only thing that really matters. It's not, you know, it wasn't four million. It wasn't three million. It wasn't money. Like, money was never going to make me happy. All it could have did was kind of fuel my denial so much to say. If, if, if what you're saying about spiritual awakening is you're, you're changing perspective and you're re rewiring your mind, then about 10 days ago, I had, I had my spiritual awakening. Okay. Because I understand what you're saying about how you worship love and you know be, be driven by something other than self. Yes. Right? Like, yes. we can just break it down to self. 
I like it. Life is not like I said before in the other group. Like what I need, what can I, what can I give to the world instead of what I can get out of the world? I started feeling like this is what it's all about. Because when it was what can I get, like I wasn't, I wasn't really. It wasn't sitting right with my conscience and sitting right with me. Like when it was all about me. Because even when it was all about me, I would try to do as much as I could for everybody else and this and that and this and that and the other thing. But there was still something that just didn't sit right with me. I started comparing myself to everybody else. Of course. You look for approval. Yeah. I look for approval. Even when I talk about anything, I don't want to mention that. I also, people yeah. don't want to hear that and I apologize, but I had to say it because and I look at everybody's face. You see the young man laughing at everything I see. I see your face. Yeah. I see yours. And I, I look. I, and I get the reaction. I'm very empathetic to most people. Okay, so here, here's the thing. I used to be exactly the same way. Well, and I'm going to keep it 100% real. I want everybody to like me, right? right? I do. But at the same time, who do you think I, I try with? Who do you think I, who do you think I answer to now? God. Exactly. God. It ain't you. It ain't God. you. It ain't the collective. As long as I'm doing what I think that is he correct. or she or the, the higher power, the, the right things for the right motives, like if I'm doing that, then like whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't like I don't have to worry about if you think I'm cool or not. Like if you like if you don't accept me or like me. Like my happiness is not on if you accept me. I want you to accept me and like me, but I'm not gonna bend, I'm not gonna do things that go against that even in order to get that. Even if there wasn't a God, what's so bad about living by rules that say, hey, I'm going to sleep with your wife. Hey, I'm not going to steal your own. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to kill you. Hey, you know, I love you. It's, that's, well, but it's so hard. It, it's know. funny because, all right, real quick, I'm going to get to you guys in two seconds, but it's funny because it's like at my job, at my other job and stuff like that, there's only like me and a few other guys that like, aren't always trying to cheat on our, like we don't cheat on our, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's weird. It's hard. It's no, nice. I know, but it's no. weird. It's like, that's just not like, you know what I mean? Like, and, like me and my friend Eduardo were talking about it the other day and we were talking about something. And it was just like, I was like, yo man, it's funny because it's like, it's, it's not, it. it's not not cool to be a good person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like, for some reason, like, especially when us men get together or, you know, in my old life and stuff like that, it was like, I had to like, like, I wasn't, like, I don't know, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care if I'm not accepted because I'm doing the wrong thing or whatever. And I don't care about even putting it out there. Like, it's, it, you know, being, doing the right things for the right reasons and being a good person, that's what I want people to say about me when I get older. Or, I mean, when I die. Sorry, I'm older now. Like, when I die or whatever. Like, no, they didn't want to go, I gotta, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, when I was in high school, I, I'd get me a nice pair of boots, a pair of blue jeans, and something decent to wear as far as a shirt. And I was happy. I didn't. I didn't need yeah. super fancy stuff. Just well, it was comfortable to me to wear. Yeah. It, it didn't have to impress anybody. It, it impressed me because I was comfortable. Yeah. In it. Well, see, I didn't grow up like that. I grew up in like a, you know the type of environment where it was like people. People that dress nicer got more attention. So what was I really looking for? Attention. Yeah. yeah. Like I didn't Rude. like if, yeah, yeah. approval, attention. I wanted people to like me. I didn't want to be the one made fun of. I did. I I've been made fun of for that type of stuff. Like I was scared to death of that because it made me feel. Here's the thing. I already feel less than. So if you guys make me feel less than, then it must be true. And I might as well kill myself. Do you understand? <laughs> and now it's like none of that, like none of that stuff matters to me. Like I wouldn't drive a Lexus or wear a Rolex ever again. I wouldn't care if I inherited five billion dollars. I don't like what it represents. I used to chase that stuff because you guys all thought it was cool. So if I had it, then you were going to be like, Mike's got it figured out. He knows what he's doing. When really I was more of a mess than. Do you understand what I'm saying? I was just. I was like convinced that. If I got it, like if I put all the pieces in the puzzle, I'd be great. And it was like, what's that game that you play? You put all the things in. You got a certain amount of time to do it. And like then, operation. Uh, operation. No, it's like that. No, it's like the X's and O's. You put them all in. They Six usually blow up. Oh, they okay. usually blow up. But whatever. Like that's what it was. Like I was trying to get it all in, and it always just blow up anyway. Like I was trying. Like I was convinced that if I could get it to go this way. And it wasn't until like, I let go and tried getting this way where things started to make sense. The pieces started, the puzzle to form. Like, 
I, I have these types of conversations with other people and this, that, and it's like we talk about stuff on a different level than I ever was able to connect with when I was sitting in your guys' seat. But I always had this mind where I was always looking past something. Like I, mean, I, I was always, I was raised to like not believe the hype or to look into this. Like I would always look at, like my next door neighbor, he was a, um, a 5% of Muslim. Anybody know what that is? No, what is 5% that of Muslim? Yeah, it's just a religion. But anyway, yeah. they say 95% of the world is walking around blind. They have no knowledge of self. They don't know what they were put here for. They don't know, and they believe that the men are the gods and the woman's the earth and the this and that. And there's a lot of really good, there's, I learned a lot of stuff from this guy. You know what I mean? And I remember thinking, I was thinking that I kind of felt like that anyway. Like that 95% of people that were just walking around were kind of like just robots, just going about life and doing whatever. And I was always looking around like, there's got to be more. Like there's got to be more. And now I found what that more is. And I'm really just trying to express it to you guys because I want you guys to feel the way I feel. I want, I want you to repair the relationships the way I was able to, to get to the point where it's like, you know, like, all of a sudden, the voice of reason, they're looking up to dad and not just watching after dad. Or, do you understand what I mean? See, to, and for me, a group of strangers that's never met you, that's willing to hug you at your worst. Dude, you could walk into an NA meeting and be like, I robbed my grandmother, I just got out of jail, this, that, the other thing, but I've got one day clean, these motherfuckers will clap. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, no, I know, but yeah. I, man, you, you can't get your mom, I can't get my fucking family to talk to me sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this group of strangers, at, at your very worst, fucking, you've got one shoe on, a big ass hole in your shirt, fucking big. Yeah. Been wearing it for seven days and smell like onions, and the motherfuckers still run over there and hug you. Yeah, and why do you, and where does that come from? Love, love, and and like the right motive, and the fact that I was there, bro. I was where you're at, and I'm here now, and I know it's possible. Yes, you know, but people oftentimes say that the Bible was written by men, and so the, and and that well, how do we know those stories are true? And mm -hmm. the just of the Bible is that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Here's Bill bringing us stories, modern day stories, that you know we know are true about people who've gone through what we've you know, gone through. And he, he he summarizes with the same same synopsis that you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Yeah. You, know, you can call him God, higher power, you don't have to call him Jesus or whatever you want to call it. But without that how the connection with the higher power. Just the bride means nothing. And, 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 and life means nothing. Right. Nothing means nothing. And there's nothing that you can it's, do. It's like, yourself. that's yeah. why we, that's why it was like, we felt that life was nothing. We felt like there was nothing. We felt like there's got to be more. So we went to this thing, the drugs and the alcohol, and it completely destroyed us, which is actually a gift if you let it be. Because the recovery of all this is if you screw up, it's okay. Just come right back and you're forgiven. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. It's so easy. Hey, so what up, Darius? I, I screwed up. Yeah. I oh. came right back because I, but I didn't come right back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of tried to, you know, it's, it's okay. Go ahead, teacher. Hear me out, Darius. What? You said, hear me out. Yeah. So, for, I, I believe that if you truly work these steps, if you truly take time and work every single step with all you can, that you're going to be able to unravel some shit, and you're going to be able to get some healing from some shit as well. I mean, you're going to be able to unravel all the shit that you really didn't know about, and it's going to come clear to you because, and if you don't really have to believe in a higher power of God, you're going to start believing because if you truly fucking work these steps and know that there's a power greater than ourselves. Why do you, why do you think that will happen? Because I've experienced it. No, but not that. You're saying about other people that if they do it, they'll know. Why will they, if they do it, why do you think they'll know? Because why? Because they see it or they what? Because they feel it. Exactly. Exactly. That's the thing. And the thing is inside you, you feel it. Like I, like I was saying before, like that is step three. Like God has never texted me. He's never wrote a sign on the thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But it says right in the book that an intuitive thought, like we can get it rocketed into the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is like I am aligned with the spirit of the universe and I am 
having spiritual awakenings on a regular basis, just like this group, doing what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to be doing it, and having these types of conversations where we're building to higher levels of understanding because love is the highest form of understanding between people. Do you understand? And this is what this is all about. This is what it's all about because we are fear, like those two fears, we are fear-driven creatures. And the love comes when the fear goes away. And when the fear goes away, that's when we're living in faith. It's the other people are paying hurts more than anything. Yeah, hurts. we are. We, yeah, we are the type of people that we're not the type of people that can step over a homeless person. Right. Why do you think that is? Look, we haven't been there because we're messed up and we know what it is to have, to have somebody give us a hand up. We are looking at the world and seeing that it's in need of serious repair. And people like us were put on earth to help other people. You didn't finish what you were saying. You said you would let him break you. Hmm? You were saying something like you would let him break no, you. I don't remember what I was saying. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. No, I mean, well, and, and it's just, I just want you guys to understand. Just me. Just me. Just me. You've been going about life all the way. Like, is that like? Can we just say? I don't think that's the maybe. I don't think there's a maybe. I don't think there is. Obvious. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's yeah. Let's be real. It's obvious. Like you don't listen. This is what happens. Sometimes we wind up in a place like this, and we're like, oh man, it was just you know, just had a, a string of bad luck, or this just happened, or that happened. But and when I was sitting, when I was standing where you were standing, I would have just thought I had a substance. Problem. I would have thought all my problems started and ended with the drugs. And when I realized, you know, when I did the work and I got sober and I realized that ever since the age of five, I was restless, irritable, discontent, anxious, angry, nervous, uncomfortable, always looking for acceptance, always looking to be, always looking to fit in, always wanting to be a part of, but never really feeling like I was a part of. Yeah, if that, if that were true, if it were just the drugs, there would be no five-year relapse. No, well, how about this? It'd never be a treatment center. Because every one of us has stopped a million, a hundred, whatever. We've all detoxed and gotten rid of it. If we had drugs problem, drug problems, when we stop doing drugs, we would be fine. Yeah. And I was happy at the funeral. I was talking about, you know, boots. Yeah, high school. I had fun getting off that school bus stuff away and go and take care of the animals, feeding the cows, flopping the hog. Sounds like you were being a service. About, sounds like you were taking care of a living creature. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like yeah. you kind of felt like you had a purpose and you were giving love. It was fun. It was fun, but it was rewarding. It was yeah. what life's about. This yeah. is, you made my point for me, my friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I left here last time, one of the happiest I've ever been. I didn't have a car, I didn't have a place to live. I had a friend give me a place to live, but I got a job helping people and not paying much, but I was so happy to serve them. Because I have that peace. Yes, you have peace. And when you feel, you get these spiritual experiences, and I call them God for God, letting you know that you're doing, let's be real. EJ, I'm going to ask you, how many nod from God do you get while you're in the bathroom swimming? <laughs> Most of the time, we get these, you shouldn't be in here, yeah. this is not what you're supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, that, see, that's my whole entire life. See, and this is what I'm trying to tell you. I wanted, this is my thing, I wanted to be happy doing the right thing, but I didn't know how to stop doing the wrong thing. Do you it's know scary, it's scary to stop, it's change. It's change, but it's not even, like, here's the thing, I, I wasn't, I couldn't feel comfortable sober. You know what I mean? Because why? I didn't have that connection with the higher power. I was just trying to be sober yeah. by myself. Yeah. And I, listen, we, I can't do that. If I could do that, I would never met any of you. Now for me, I had a connection with the higher power like before, I was sober for a while, but for me, my biggest downfall was <coughs> getting rid of that connection. And that's, well, what, that's, gets, that's, what gets rid of that connection, T? My, my mind. <laughs> well, the drugs. Nothing will put a wall up quicker yeah. than the drugs. And I, I mean, that, and I, that was my biggest, like, I don't know, addict driven thing was I did not have God close to me anymore. Yeah. And like, now I do, and I'm fucking happy. Again. And what did I tell you the other day? What's the only thing that can mess you up? So. Is to stray away from that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you, I told you, that's like a, wire, a, a Wi Fi wireless connection. 
Stay as close to it to you as you can. You know what I mean? Self will run right. Thank you. Self will run right. Any life run on self will can hardly be a success. We wouldn't wind up in jail for treatment centers or this and that. Like your best thinking got you here. Our great ideas. This is this. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so what do I got to do now? It's easy. Stop making crazy ass decisions and think like, you know, turn it over. Turn it over to people. Like you said, Angel, before you come into a place like this and people want to hug you. We want to hug you because we know where you've been. We know where you can go. You just need to follow. It's been, it's been ten years probably since I've felt accepted when I walked into a room. Like I felt like I belonged to something. Just that fellowship alone made me stop and think. Maybe I don't have to be a douchebag. Maybe I don't have to have my guard up and maybe I don't have to hate up. myself. I will have to. So if, if a stranger can walk up and hug me and say, I love you, man, and yeah. not know me, how come I can't look in the mirror and say, I love you? Yeah. Well, you ever heard what they say, right? We'll love you until you can love yourself. Yeah. Man, <laughs> That's I, what they mean by that. I, I never in my life thought that anything like that was true. I thought it was just a whole bunch of <laughs> hippie hoop law sayings, you know, the old people say just to make you try to believe something. But man, when I when I walk when I walked into East Bernard this last week, they they jump up and fucking yeah. shake my hand and hug me like they've known me for years. Yeah. Hey Andrew, Andrew from Lubbock, they've only met me once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something yeah. jumping up and hug me like that. That's a whole, you know what I'm saying? That's a yeah. whole experience in itself. That's a spiritual experience. That's a spirit. I mean, it's like, because did that, did that not make your spirit feel warm? Yeah, it made my whole exactly. body. It made my, man, on the cool, like, like when me and Rick coin people out, it makes me cry every time I'm yeah. somebody else. <laughs> it, it makes me, man, and I'm not, I'm not really a crier, but, yeah. but then trying, trying to express to somebody <coughs> what I want for them while I'm holding this coin. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, it melts me. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And, and keep going. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Keep doing that. I, I understand. I was so blocked off. I was so emotionally stunted. I had no coping skills. I thought life was about one thing when it was really about another. Yeah. And when I started when I started doing the actions, like when I started doing this thing, oh man, it just, things changed. I was like you when you talked about when you were in treatment the first week here. You know what I'm saying? Looking yeah. down at the ground, didn't say a damn thing, just broken. Broken. I couldn't have been any more broken, and I get, I mean, bro, I mean, and that, like, that being broken is a gift. Yeah. That really is. When you get that broken, like, and I say all the time, the absolute, like, God brought me to AA, and then AA brought me to God. And I came in here, and I thank God for heroin every single day, because it completely destroyed me. And I've been able through the 12 steps and you guys and God to build myself up to the person I was always meant to be, the person that God wanted me to be, not the person I was trying to be so that you would like me. If you would have said not that the person, me, you know what I'm saying? If you would have said that to me 22 days ago, I would, I would say this motherfucker needs to be the psychic for <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, yo, all right, good. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys.